Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. Today I'm excited to be sharing with you the latest range of puzzles from Pezzle. And I just want to say a big thank you to Pezzle Puzzle for very generously sending me this entire set of puzzles here. And not only that, but they also sent me an entire second set. Speaking of which, I have a pretty exciting giveaway to tell you about. So this one is just for the Aussies. So if you're living here in Australia, this one is definitely for you. The giveaway is actually being held over on Instagram. So for your chance to win this entire set of very fun and fabulous puzzle puzzles, then head on over to my Instagram account. The name of the account should be on the screen now and you'll find my giveaway post where I've listed all the details on how to enter. I hope you have fun entering the giveaway and good luck. Now let's get back to the very important task of looking at these puzzles. Before we look at each puzzle a bit more closely, I just wanted to mention the photographer who's behind all these very fabulous images for Pezzle, both this collection and the first Pezzle puzzle collection. So her name is Tori Ansley and she's actually based right here in Sydney, Australia. So I think that is very cool. Um, yeah, I really like all her images. They're just really fun, quirky, fabulous, a little bit vintage sometimes and you know, just a bit cheeky. So yeah, I always think they're really good fun to puzzle. So if you're interested in uh, checking out her work or finding out a bit more about her, I'll leave all her socials and other info in the description box below. So in this set of puzzles, we've got two 1000 pieces, a 500 piece, and we've got a stack of five mini puzzles here and all of them are 100 pieces. And actually I believe all of these uh, have a little alcoholic drink recipe on the back. So whatever the name of the puzzle is, so Diamond Fizz, for example, that's the name of the drink you get to make on the back. So. <laughs> I guess that's pretty fun. Uh, if you want to have a fun night in, having a fun drink and doing a puzzle, you can, but probably for the best that it's only 100 pieces. Otherwise, uh, things might get a little bit out of hand, I think. So let's take a look at some of the images. So this 500 piece one is called Spilt Milk and it's a really, uh, quite a pretty image, but yeah, really fun. It's got, it kind of makes you think you're in like a milk bar or at like a kid's party or something. We've got lots of milkshakes, ice creams, like ice cream sundaes. We've got like sprinkles, lots of uh, milkshake glasses, chocolate, cherries, sort of things you'd put on top of ice cream, like ice cream toppings, like I guess pretzels, chocolate, chocolate, choc buds, things like that. So yeah, a really fun one and a little bit retro feeling, a bit quirky, but yeah, I think uh, this one looks like a lot of fun to do. And then this next one is very bright and colorful. It's 1000 pieces and it's called Go Bananas. And um, this is very quirky. I love the color contrast on this one, like the teal, tealy blue colors and the bright pops of yellow and orange. It's really fun. Um, but yeah, it's sort of this very quirky scene of, I guess someone kind of preparing breakfast, but they seem to be very banana obsessed. There's like a banana in a frame and banana in their bunch of flowers. They've got candy bananas. They've got a bowl of banana, banana cereal, the chopping up bananas. It's uh, yeah, like the name says, go bananas. I think that's what this person has done. They've gone bananas, but yeah, looks super fun. And then the other 1000 piece one is called Cards on the Table. And this one's a bit more spooky ooky. So I feel like this would make a pretty fun Halloween puzzle. We've sort of got this mysterious woman here and she's, I guess, doing like a tarot card reading and looks like she's got all sorts of things for spells or a bit of witchcraft, that sort of thing. So yeah, very, a bit more dark and again, a bit, has a bit of a quirky kind of vintage feel to it. I love all the sort of like flowers or dried flowers and fake flowers and the different like colors and textures, like the crushed velvet. And yeah, there's lots of details going on in this one. So quite fun and yeah, a little, like I said, a bit spooky. So yeah, I think this would be a really fun Halloween puzzle. And then let's take a look at all these cute mini puzzles. I love the colors of the boxes. I mean, even these ones as well, they're just always really fun and I think really well done. I actually noticed as well that uh, I think most of these minis, yeah, they're all part of what's called the cocktail collection. So that makes sense since they've got the little cocktail or drink on the back. Um, and so this one is called Diamond Fizz and it's very uh, pastel pink and pretty and very ornate. We've got sort of pictures of what looks like kind of milkshake glasses, but I think it might actually be the pink cocktail inside, the Diamond Fizz cocktail. But we've got feathers and we've got 
uh, like Poe jewelry and gloves and ornate mirrors and uh, yeah it's very pretty and it has like I guess another bottle of alcohol and cocktail glass and that sort of thing so there's like lots of little details packed in but very very pretty so yeah that one looks like a fun one to do as well I mean they all do let's be real and then this one I think is definitely one of my favorite images from this mini collection it's very fun and colorful it's called jungle bird and yeah very tropical vibes here so we've got these very tropical looking I guess jungle bird cocktails and we've got like a bird cage and uh, lots of like jungle kind of plants and flowers bright colorful flowers and sort of palms or not ferns I guess like fronds palm fronds and like uh, pictures of flamingos and things like that so yeah very colorful and fun very summery so yeah that might be a nice summer cocktail you could make and puzzle that you can do I guess and then I guess this is probably my other favorite I guess I'm going for more of the uh, very bright and colorful ones. So this one's really eye-catching as well. It's called El Diablo and it's got this sort of uh, I guess Is it like Day of the Dead? Uh, themed uh, Skulls like the candy skulls I think they're called and they're very like elaborately or very ornately painted and decorated So it's got those and some cactus plants and these lovely like sort of puffy streamers that are very colorful and yeah and it's got the I guess old Diablo cocktails down here too and yeah I love the sort of orange and pinky yellows contrasting with like the bright blue very cool so yeah I really like the look of that one too and maybe it's a spicy cocktail I'm not sure but yeah they've got some like chilies and limes and things in the picture as well so it looks a bit spicy and then this is another very uh, I guess pretty or romantic one so I feel like this one might have been actually a collaboration because it's Pezzle but it also says Drunk in Love. So I think this one came out before the rest of these little mini puzzles came out. But yeah, it's still part of the cocktail collection and Drunk in Love is the name of the cocktail. Um, and it actually says on the back here, um, like it's got the socials for Pezzle Puzzle, uh, Pezzle Puzzles, but it's also got at Drunk in Love uh, drink game. So I guess it's a bit of a collaboration with them and they must make, I don't know too much about it, but they must make a drinking game as well. But I guess they've sort of added this one to their collection too. So yeah, this one's a very like Valentine's-esque image, I guess. Um, which way does it go? This way. We've got lots of roses and sort of Valentine's Day chocolates, sort of feathers and cocktail glasses. Again, a picture of the cocktail there. Um, yeah, and like fluffy high heels and yes, very boudoir and romantic and that sort of thing so yeah this looks like a lot of fun as well and we're nearly through them all and then this last one is called midnight cowboy and this is quite like a bit more dark and moody um, and a bit more disco i guess compared to like the others uh yeah it's really it's a fun image as well so it's got all these like darker blue kind of colors but then these pops of like sparkly silver with like this cowboy boot and uh, like a sparkly blue uh, cowboy hat we've got like disco balls and so yeah it definitely looks like you know a nightclub or a, you know, like a disco or something and we've got the cocktail there so yeah that one looks like a lot of fun as well I think all of these will be really fun to do but for this video I've actually decided to try out uh, two of the puzzles so I'll just grab them from this pile here so the first one that we're going to take a look at and put together is the Go Bananas 1000 piece one. I think it's just really fun um, and yeah, definitely uh, have seen other people doing this one and it just has always caught my eye. So very keen to do that one. And then of course, I thought we'd do the 500 piece one since we only have one to choose from. We're going to be doing the spilt milk one, which I think is a really fun, quite pretty and yeah just enjoyable looking image as well so definitely looking forward to doing that one so without further ado let's check out these puzzles let's take a look at the packaging so the box is a nice compact square and it's pretty sturdy and fairly strong feeling but the one thing that really stands out is the feel of the box so it's got this lovely soft touch feel or like a sort of soft silicon or i guess some people call it like a soft velvet touch so yeah it feels very luxe very fancy so that's really nice and let's look at all the details on the box so we've got a lovely v12 
fairly large size of the image here. Then we've got the name, Go Bananas, and we've got the Pezzle logo and 1000 piece puzzle written there. And I really like the colors. It's so fun and bright. Like I love the tealy uh, blue of the text and it's like golden yellow. And of course it goes really well with this image. So yeah, it's really nicely designed. So let's check out the uh, info on the sides. So on this side here, we've got the Go Bananas name. We've got the Pezzle logo up here and we've got 1000 pieces written here. Then if we turn it over here, we've got just simply the Pezzle logo. Then on this side, we've just got a repeat of the other side. So the logo, the name and the piece count. And then finally on this side, we've got a little bit of different info. We've got a barcode, like a little sort of warning choking hazard. We've got the name of the puzzle. And then it says completed puzzle is approximately 20 by 28 inches designed in San Francisco, manufactured in China. So let's take a look at the reverse side. So we've got, uh, once again, the whole image here and it says photographed by Tori Ansley. And then we have uh, the Pezzle logo and like a little sort of pale strip here. And then we've got a bit of text. It says, we're on a mission to create puzzles with personality that inspire joy, laughs, and all the good feels. And then we've got the app Pezzle Puzzles and PezzlePuzzles.com. So I think let's open this up. So inside it's just plain white. So yeah, pretty nice and simple. And then we've got, well, first thing that jumps out at me is actually the color of the bottom part of the box. So we've got this gorgeous, uh, like lovely rich teal color, really pretty. I guess it's the same as the Go Bananas text on the front of the box, but yeah, it looks really nice and no text, just lovely plain teal, but yeah, really, really lovely color. And then on, sitting on top here, we've got the poster. So let's open that out. So it's just white on the back. And then I guess it's sort of A3, I think. Well, I think that's half is, I think it's like roughly two A4 sheets or similar to that. So yeah, quite a good size. I can see all the details very easily, so that's good. But the other thing I notice is this lovely soft touch feel like that soft silicon is repeated on the poster. So very luxe, feels very fancy. But yeah, this poster is definitely gonna come in handy and yeah, just a really nice size. And then we have a bag of pieces and it's a really nice sort of a canvas bag with the Pezzle logo printed on the front and a nice zipper top. So we've got our gorgeous pieces in there, which we're gonna take a closer look at very soon. And if I take that out, yeah, the bottom of the box is just plain white as well. So yeah, nice and simple, not too fussy and yeah, still very luxe feeling. So let's take a close look at the pieces. I've poured all the pieces out, but before we look at those, I just thought I'd mention that I did notice a little bit of dust in the sort of bottom of the bag. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. There's just a little bit, just something to note. doesn't necessarily mean it's bad or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll see how much dust there is like within the puzzle pieces and what gets left on the board and in the box and that sort of thing. I'll kind of keep you updated as we go along. Um, but yeah, let's look at the actual pieces. So they're beautiful and bright and they look really nice. I have noticed that some seem to still be stuck together. Um, they do seem to be cut all the way through though. They just haven't come apart yet. So it's very easy to just pull them apart. It doesn't seem to damage them or anything like that. They just yeah, like I said, they've been cut through. They just haven't fully undone. I guess they like hanging out with their friends. So yeah, it's kind of cathartic actually pulling them apart like that. Uh, so let's, I guess, grab a piece and take a look at uh, all the qualities. So the back is just a nice, simple uh, gray, gray board or cardboard backing, which is my preference because I find paper backing is more prone to getting damaged. Not always, but it it can be, it can peel or tear. So I quite like that it's just a simple cardboard backing. So that's nice. And then as for the thickness, it's quite a nice sturdy feel. It's like a medium to thick thickness. So yeah, it feels very nice to handle, feels strong, not at all flimsy. And yeah, I think these will be easy to, easy to sort of pick up and place and that sort of thing. And then as for the top, it's that lovely uh, soft, touch or soft silicon, soft velvet, whatever you want to call it, surface, which is the same as the poster and the box. 
so it feels very luxurious very nice but the one advantage to this kind of finish is that it is completely matte so you don't have any glare or sheen so if I move it around you won't really see any shine or glare or any reflection so that's really good obviously super helpful for puzzling but also if you want to take videos or photos it's uh, really nice to have that as well you don't have to worry about shiny bits on your photos so yeah really good so let's take a look at some of the piece shapes so obviously we've got one with four tabs and let's see if, oh, yep we've got one with three tabs then we've got a two tab one and another version of a two tab and do I have a one tab oh yes here we go one tab and do we have zero I feel like oh yes okay wow that's cool so it looks like we've got all your sort of traditional piece shapes so we've got lots there six different shapes plus edges so that's fantastic so that's quite a lot of variety so hopefully we won't have as many false fits that being said though when I look at the pieces they do all have a kind of similar look so I think within each shape there's not a huge variety it's not like a regular shape so they're all fairly standard I mean I'm sure there's if I hold up these two together let's have a look so obviously there's I've got two stacked on top of each other hopefully you can see that there's differences they're not exactly the same but they're kind of similar they're like not too far off so yeah that'll be interesting to see if we experience many false fits or not um, but hopefully having lots of like well six different piece shapes means we won't experience false fits plus the image itself is pretty detailed and has a lot going on so that'll definitely help as well and what else uh yeah I haven't really seen any damaged pieces everything's looking very nice the quality looks great so very pleased with that I mean I'll let you know if I find any anything that's noteworthy and as for dust I guess my fingers feel a teeny bit dusty but not excessively so but again I'll update you with that here's another one of those bits that are, haven't come unstuck but it's kind of fun pulling those apart actually um, so the other thing I was going to do is actually just do a quick comparison between one of these pieces and one of the pieces from the last collection that Pezzle put out so I've, here's one I prepared earlier so I've got this puzzle here from the last collection and I've got a piece that I pulled out of that so let's see let me grab another piece oh, oh, oh. can we find one of the same shape here we go okay so the backs are pretty different uh, their last collection had a white paper backing which I don't know if you can see actually but there is actually a little bit of damage so I did find that it was a little bit prone to getting a bit bent and a little bit like dented and stuff like that so yeah so I guess I feel more confident now that this new collection has just the simple cardboard it already looks much nicer so yeah and then as for thickness I have a close look they look very similar so here's the older one and the new one and yeah they look very they feel pretty similar and then as for the top they have the same uh, soft touch feel and matte feel so that's the same and then even the piece shapes you can probably tell but they look pretty similar as well so I think may the main thing that's changed is just the they've taken off the white paper so yeah I think that's already a really great improvement so yeah it'll be interesting to see what it's like to puzzle with these new ones um, yeah I'm excited so I think uh, let's take a quick look at the poster and talk about how I'm going to put this together and then we'll get into puzzling I know we're all waiting for that um, so I'm going to be doing this sideways uh, just because I prefer to work that way when I'm working on a portrait style puzzle it's just easier for me so I can reach everything more easily um, I feel like this is actually a well a really fun image and really colorful but there's so many fun like textures and patterns and colors going on that I think it shouldn't be too hard to put together famous last words hopefully I'm correct so I think there's a lot of variation going on around the edges so I think we can definitely pull out the edge pieces and put, even put those together first but I think sorting will be quite straightforward so I can pull out this sort of teal plastic for the telephone we've got 
the candy bananas here. We've got actual bananas, this sort of solid yellow. We've got the chopping board. We've even got the sort of bowl of like banana cereal or dried bananas. I don't know, that's pretty weird. So we might be able to find this sort of texture. We can find the flowers, the frame, the curtains. And then I think, and even the radio and sunglasses. So there's so many distinct things that I think should be fairly easy to sort. If I look at the pieces, obviously I can easily see the tablecloth. Um, but like this piece, straight away I know that that's from the radio. So that's pretty good. And what else? And then this one to me looks like it's from the chopping board. So yeah, I think it looks like it should be a fairly chilled, easygoing puzzle. We'll see. So I think without further ado, let's get into puzzling. I'm back and I've really been enjoying this image. It's been a lot of fun to put together. Just loving the strange, quirky imagery of uh, bananas everywhere. And I just love the colors. Like I love this sort of tealy blue and this sort of, I guess, pastel minty green and the pops of like golden, orangey yellows. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And there's lots of different patterns going on and textures, and lots of fun. Also makes you wonder what the backstory is. Like who is this person or character that's currently on a banana health kick or obsessed with bananas. Why, why do they love bananas so much that they even want to put one in a gilded frame? It's quite bizarre. Definitely uh, something interesting going on there. But yeah, that's what I really like about the Puzzle Puzzles images. They're just so different and fun and quirky. 
And I've done about, I guess, probably two thirds all off of the puzzles. It's been very enjoyable and very hard to stop. So I, yeah, I was getting a bit carried away and then I was like, no, we're gonna stop and talk about it. To get to that point, it's taken three hours and 15 minutes. Uh, it was definitely actually a bit more tricky than I first thought. There I was going like, oh, it'll be so easy to sort all the yellows and the different things. But actually, when you're looking at pieces, I'll grab one. When you're looking at pieces close up, you're like, oh, that's yellow, but I have no idea what that belongs to. Is it a candy banana, a normal banana? Uh, is it the curtain? Actually, I thought the curtain would be easy because of the checkered print. But some of it, like especially this bit here, where the print isn't as uh, defined as some, like as some of these pieces, it actually, uh, I realized I had sorted some into like the banana pile. So there you go. Not as easy to tell uh, what things are. And even these orange flowers, some of these were a bit hard to tell close up. Like if you zoom in, they don't, not all of them look like petals straight away until closer inspection been a little bit of uh, trickiness going on but definitely got there in the end I guess as I got more familiar with the image I was getting a bit more clued into the colors and textures like these candy bananas are definitely a slightly lighter yellow so if I grab I don't know and well uh, this piece like the yellow is quite different there so yeah once you have a closer look at things you can sort of tell them apart but yeah so that was interesting a little bit more tricky than I thought but Still got there, still had a lot of fun. So let's talk about the quality. So yeah, for the most part, I've been really enjoying it. I mean, I absolutely love the surface. It's so matte and I love the soft touch. It's just, yeah, it feels very luxurious. So yeah, really nice to work with. And then as for the piece fit, the pieces fit pretty well together. Like, as you can see, you can lift up sections pretty easily. So I think this puzzle would definitely pass the pickup challenge if that's what you wanted to do. Although when it comes to taking them apart, that might be a bit more tricky. Like, oh yeah, okay. That doesn't seem to be too tight of a fit. So I think taking the puzzle apart might not be too, too bad. Um, you might still need two hands though. Like it's a bit harder with one hand, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be too, too tight. So hopefully that means the pieces won't get too damaged when you're taking them apart. Oh, speaking of piece fit again, um, but more, talking about like the variation of shapes and that sort of thing. There have actually been a few false fits. So, I mean, mostly where things have like a lot of the same color, but although I did have one in this chopping board somewhere, I can't remember where it was, but yeah, I did have something in the wrong spot for a little while. And then I finally clicked that, oh, that doesn't go there. And I think I had, might've had a false fit up in the curtain as well. And maybe somewhere in the bananas, I feel like there are a couple. So it does seem like even though we have six piece shapes and as well as edge pieces, maybe there's still not quite enough variation within each of those shapes. So yeah, I thought that was really interesting because I thought for sure, oh, six different piece shapes, we definitely were unlikely to have false fits, but yeah, I guess not. So that's kind of interesting um, that maybe it's the variation of the shape rather than the, what the shape is that determines more if you're gonna have false fits or not. And of course the image. I just thought that was interesting. And even though I did say this is quite a detailed image, which it is, there's still a lot of sections, like I said, that when you're looking at pieces close up, they're hard to tell apart, like candy bananas versus bananas, that sort of thing. So yeah, so that was interesting, but I'm not too bothered by it. It didn't take me too, too long to realize I had things in the wrong spot. It was pretty easily fixed. It didn't cause me too much of a headache or anything like that. And then as for puzzle dust, we do have a little bit you can probably see some of that on the board, but it's not excessive. Definitely had puzzles that have a lot more than that. And I've had ones that had less, but I think this is a kind of fairly normal amount of puzzle dust and it hasn't bothered me at all. Hasn't been a problem. I mean, I guess apart from just having slightly dusty fingers after a puzzling session, but that's no big deal. Um, so yeah, not really bothered by that. Um, but I guess the one uh, real con that I've found so far is there have been a few pieces that have bent tabs so I'll see I think there's one here oh yeah there's one here so I'm just going to put the camera down and pop this one out to show you okay so here's the piece in question so there's there's definitely been a few that I've found but this is probably one of the worst ones where yeah this tab here it's uh, quite hopefully you can see that yeah it's like kind of bent and the layers have split a little bit so that's a bit, bit sad I mean it does happen I think 
with a bit of glue and then putting something heavy on it to press it together, like clamp it together, I could probably fix that. But yeah, it does mean that I guess some of these are a little bit prone to getting damaged. Um, even though like the piece itself feels very sturdy, I guess maybe the tabs are not quite as sturdy. So yeah, or maybe just because it's the way the piece is put together with the different layers, maybe they're more prone to splitting or something like that. I'm not too sure. But yeah, I did notice that on a few of them, but that was basically the only sort of damage I found. I didn't really find anything else. It just was a few pieces that had tabs that were yeah a little bit bent or split like that. So yeah, um, so yeah, just something to note and um, yeah, it'd be nice if there weren't any, but I mean, this happens with all sorts of puzzles. So yeah, and I guess I'll let you know if I find anything worse than that, but yeah, it's not the end of the world and yeah, hopefully I can fix that with a bit of glue or something. So I think uh, that's enough chatting and I'm definitely excited to get back into this. So let's get puzzling. I finished the Go Bananas puzzle and I really love how it's turned out. It's so fun and vibrant and it's just a colorful, quirky image. And yeah, I really enjoyed piecing it together. And as for the second session of puzzling, it took one hour and five minutes, so a little bit quicker than I was expecting. And all up, the 1000 pieces took four hours and 20 minutes, which was including sorting. So I was quite pleasantly surprised with that because I did find some parts of this puzzle a little bit tricky and a bit time consuming. So I honestly thought it was going to take me longer than that. So yeah, very uh, pleased with the end result. When it comes to the piece quality, overall, I'm really pleased. I really love a lot of things about this puzzle, like the surface feel and the completely matte finish. And I just love how the pieces fit together. It has a really nice fit. You could definitely do a puzzle pickup for sure. Um, but there were a couple of cons. One of them, a very minor one, was just that I did experience a few false fits, but it really wasn't frustrating or too bothersome at all. So I can definitely let that slide. And I think that's really gonna depend on the style of image and how much detail's in it and that sort of thing. But I guess the bigger con for me was more that some of the pieces did have a bit of damage on them. So some of the tabs on a few pieces were damaged, but when it comes down to it, I honestly don't know if that's something that occurs in all of their 1000 piece puzzles, or if it's just sort of a one-off or the occasional puzzle ends up getting damaged in manufacturing or boxing, that sort of thing. Um, I've definitely seen that kind of thing in other puzzle brands too, where you'll get plenty of perfectly uh, decent puzzles and then the odd puzzle will be uh, have some damaged pieces in it. So yeah, it does happen, unfortunately. But overall, I'm yeah really pleased and really love how this turned out. So next up, let's take a look at the 500 piece puzzle from this collection. We'll do an unboxing, look at some of the pieces and of course, piece it together. Let's take a look at the packaging for the 500 piece puzzle. So it's very similar looking to the 1000 piece, but the box is a bit smaller, but we've got a lovely square sturdy box again with that beautiful luxurious soft touch feel. And then on the front, the same sort of info as the other puzzle. We've got the whole image here. We've got the name Spilt Milk, 
the Pezzo logo and 500 piece puzzle written there. So let's take a look at the sides. So just like the other puzzle, we've got the Pezzo logo, we've got Spilt Milk written here and 500 pieces written there. Then we've got just the Pezzo logo on this side. Then we have the same as the other side, the logo, the name and the piece count. And then we've got uh, a little bit of info here. Again, the barcode, the sort of choking hazard warning. We've got the name Spilt Milk. And then this one says completed puzzle is approximately 22 by 17 inches designed in San Francisco and manufactured in China. So let's turn this over and look at this side. So we've got the whole image and the photo uh, is also by Tori Ansley. And here it says, we're on a mission to create puzzles with personality that inspire, inspire joy, laughs, and all the good feels. So the same text as before, and we've got the uh, little socials here. And we've got a white strip and the red puzzle logo here. So let's open this one up. So again, just a simple uh, white paper lining inside the box. But just like the other one, we've got this a gorgeous bright color on the bottom part of the box. A lovely, just like gorgeous red, very rich and vibrant. Yeah, love that. I love the sort of contrasting colors they use, the sort of blush pink with this like bright red. It's so cool. Um, and then we've got a poster here. So this one is, I guess, about half the size as the other one from memory. So. I guess it's about A4 or similar. And again, it's just white on the back and has that soft touch feel. But um, I think it's still, I mean, it's definitely bigger than the front of the box for sure, like obviously. Um, but I think I think it, even at this size, even though it is smaller than the other one, it still shows quite a lot of detail. So I don't think it'll be too much of a problem, not with this design, like things are pretty distinct. So yeah, I think it'll still be a very handy size and still easy to see everything so that's good and then just like the other puzzle we've got our lovely canvas bag with the Pezzo logo on the front and zipper at the top with our gorgeous pieces in there which we're going to look at very shortly and just again the just plain white on the inside so let's take a look at the pieces I've poured all the pieces out and before we look at them I uh, just something to note the bag did have a little bit of dust in it just like the other puzzle but yeah, not, not an excessive amount. And again, I'll see how much dust ends up being on the puzzle board and in the box. Um, but yeah, looking at the pieces, uh, there are a few like the other puzzle that are stuck together, but not uh, stuck, stuck. They have been cut through, so there's no damage or any issues there. They just want to hang out with their puzzle piece friends, I guess. So yeah, nothing that really bothers me about that. So the main uh, thing that I notice that's different with these pieces is that the size is definitely bigger than the 1000 piece size. That's pretty normal. A lot of brands tend to do that where they make their 500 piece pieces a bit bigger for some reason. Um, sometimes it's actually for uh, making them like easier to grip for people who might have issues picking up small things or something like that, or maybe for children who want like, you know, bit pieces that are bigger so it's a bit safer for younger children, that sort of thing or just because they're fun. Like I actually don't mind the larger piece. I think it's kind of fun and cute. So yeah, I think ooh, I think that'll be nice to puzzle with. And let's take a look at one of the pieces. So pretty similar or pretty much the same as the 1000 piece. We've got the lovely cardboard backing. Then the thickness, I'm pretty sure it's the same as the other one. The lovely sort of medium to thick thickness, feels very strong and sturdy. And then the top has that lovely uh, soft touch finish, which is completely matte. So if I move it around, there's no sheen or glare at all. Uh, so yeah, that'll be really great to puzzle with. And again, great for videos and photos. So yeah, really nice and luxurious. And then as for piece shape, so we've got a two tab. We have another type of two tab. We have a single tab. We've got four tabs. What else do we have? What else am I looking for? Oh three tabs um i think i'm looking for a zero tab <laughs> like forgetting what i'm doing here getting distracted by pretty pieces oh here we go oh come here so yeah we've got just like the 1000 piece all the sort of traditional classic piece shapes so yeah we've got six here so that's great um and again like the other puzzle within each shape when i look through the box 
Um, there's not a huge amount of variation. So if I hold these two single tabs on top of each other, they look pretty sort of similar in shape. There's not a wild difference between them. So yeah, again, we'll see if uh, there's any false fits or any issues like that. But also the image for this puzzle is like pretty detailed. So that's gonna help with false fits as well. And then um, apart from that, I guess, yeah, I haven't seen any damaged pieces, like having a bit of a rummage through here, nothing that's caught my eye, but I'll let you know if I find anything that's worth noting. And I thought just like our other puzzle, I'd uh, bring in, have a look at a piece from, a 500 piece from the last collection. So here's one I prepared earlier. So I've got a piece here. So I guess the main difference really is this has the white paper backing and yeah even on these ones the i don't know if you can see but the oh, not in the camera i don't know if you can see but the tabs have a little bit of a little bit sort of a little bit of damage there so yeah definitely a little bit more prone to damage it seems with the white paper backing so yeah definitely glad that the uh new ones have just the plain cardboard but yeah apart from that i think like the thickness oh, yeah, to me it looks pretty identical. They look about the same thickness. I think the main difference is just one's got paper on the back and one doesn't. And the tops are the same and the shapes as well, pretty much the same. So yeah, I think that's the main difference. And again, definitely excited to see how this 500 piece goes together. So let's take a quick look at a little poster here. We can put it this way. Um, depending on the size, I know it's got the size on the box, but I'm not very good at visualizing numbers to like what it would actually look like on the board. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing it upright or I might be doing it sideways as well, we'll see. Um, might figure that one out when I'm halfway through puzzling. But again, this puzzle, just like the first one, has quite a lot of detail and texture. So I think we've got plenty of detail around the edges. So we should be able to do the border first without any issues. And then we've got like lots of gorgeous colors and textures. So we've got these bright red cherries here, which we can definitely sort. These pretzels, we've got bits of chocolate. We've got, I think it's like candy popcorn, ice cream. And then maybe some of the glasses and things like that might be a little bit more tricky. That sort of texture it might be a bit hard to tell the difference, but this is not a huge puzzle. It's only 500 pieces. So by the time we've put in lots of these other things, then we won't have too much left over to have to work out. So yeah, I think this one should be, shouldn't be too hard either. And yeah, definitely looking forward to it. So again, I think it's time we get into some puzzling.
I'm back and I finished the spilt milk puzzle and I really enjoyed piecing this one together as well. It was a lot of fun and I just think it's a really pretty and also very delicious looking image. So I love all the pastel, uh, pretty pastel colors and the rainbow sprinkles, but I also love the bright pops of like red cherries and pretzels and chocolate and things like that. So yeah, just a lot of fun. And this puzzle took me one hour and 30 minutes to piece together and that was including sorting. So I'm very pleased with that time quite surprised actually I wasn't rushing or speeding through it at all I was just taking my time and plodding along so yeah quite pleasantly surprised with that time um, I did feel like this puzzle was a bit easier I mean of course it's only 500 pieces compared to go bananas which is 1000 pieces but I feel like the sections in it were just a bit uh, less tricky to do so yeah I think that probably contributed to it being a bit quicker to put together as well Let's quickly talk about the piece quality. So this puzzle is very similar to the 1000 piece puzzle, except I liked it even more. Uh, so the surface is that beautiful soft touch, uh, which I really like. And I love that it's completely matte as well. And the pieces fit together really nicely. It's a very comfortable fit. You can definitely do puzzle pickups and you can move sections around. And uh, unlike the Go Bananas puzzle, I didn't have a single false fit, so really impressed with that. I mean, it probably just comes down to maybe because there's less pieces, the image is a bit more, I guess, defined, or it has more distinct sections and colors than the Go Bananas one, which had lots of yellow. So yeah, I'm not too sure why there were less or no false fits in this one, but that's my guess. And the other thing that I was very impressed with was that every piece was in perfect condition. There wasn't a single bent or damaged piece that I could see. So yeah, really pleased with that. So I had a lot of fun piecing together both of these puzzle puzzles and overall I really enjoyed the quality as well. If you're looking for something that's a little bit different when it comes to puzzling, then I would definitely recommend checking out the latest collection from Puzzle. They're very luxurious puzzles, the quality is very good. And of course they have a really great range of fun and quirky images to choose from. In the comments below, let me know which of these two designs was your favorite. And if you've tried Pezzle puzzles before, let us know what your experience was like. And if you live here in Australia, then don't forget to head on over to my Instagram account where you can enter the giveaway for your chance to win the latest collection from Pezzle. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button. And for more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.